This is Diana Sullivan in Austin, Texas. I need to make a baby gift. So I'm going to make a reversible English rib blanket in a baby size for my friend. I'm using a worsted weight yarn in a, in a baby color on my bulky machine. Now I'm going to use 102 needles set up for one by one rib. You can certainly make this project on a standard machine though. And in fact these are great to just zip out for charity knitting because the stitch is completely flat and completely reversible. I'm set up for one by one rib but you have to keep in mind that the leftmost needle, the end needle, is on the main bed on the left and the rightmost needle, that is the end needle, is on the river on the right. And I'm going to go ahead and do my typical river selvage. My carriages are set for the very tightest tension and absolutely plain ordinary knitting. That's for my zigzag row. Now I'm going to thread the machine just by dropping the yarn between the two beds and I reach under and catch it. I typically put a clothespin on it and let that dangle. Then I'm going to thread the river arm and knit slowly from right to left until I get my zigzag row on the knitting machine. Now I'm going to install my long river comb. I just put it up between the two beds, remove the wire, push the comb up and slide the wire back in. Now I'm going to put a whole lot of weight on this. I'm going to space five of the large river weights across the knitting, just spacing them evenly using the holes in the bottom of the comb. Now I'm setting up my carriages for circular knitting. Tension one on both carriages and I have a part button on the top and a part button on the bottom for circular knitting. Now I'm going to knit three rows to make the perfect selvage. When my three rows are finished for the selvage, it's time to set up the pattern. I'm going to set the river to tuck as it approaches the knitting. You see this first needle is going to be a tuck needle. I'm trying to avoid any raggediness or problems along the edges, so when I approach this needle, it's going to be a tuck. To set the river carriage to tuck, I put this in P and I slide this lever over to P. My carriages are both set on tension four and I'm going to knit 13 rows. Now I know it's a little unusual that you would knit 13 rows but I want to end with an odd number and end on the left side of the work. Then I'm going to change the carriage setting. As I worked I stopped every so often and felt the comb underneath, wiggled it, tugged it down. I just want to make sure as I begin that the comb drops. There are various things in between and underneath the beds where the comb can catch. So my comb's dropping properly. Now I've done my 13 rows and it's time to change the machine settings. I will set the main carriage to tuck to the right and I'm going to cancel the tuck setting on the river carriage. Then I'm going to knit 13 rows. At 13 rows I'm on the right again. I'm going to change my settings to river tuck and cancel the tuck up on the main bed and knit 13 rows. Now I'm just going to keep repeating this procedure switching from river tuck to main bed tuck every 13 rows and I'm going to knit a long time because I like a very generous sized crib blanket. After a while weight hangers are a better way to go than this big comb. So I'm going to go ahead and take the big comb off and just use weight hangers for the rest of the project. You might be wondering how I keep my place. Well, I set my row counter to zero every so often after so many sets of 13. 13 is easy enough to do in your head. 13, 26, 39, 52, 65, and after that, yeah not so easy. So I'll just set it to zero every so often and keep track of my rows. And I also, if I get up and leave the knitting and I'm wondering whether or not I was doing a knit tuck or a rib tuck, that's easy to see just by looking closely at the needles. 
a rib tuck will distinctly have two loops on the needle. And then for this particular row, which was a rib tuck, there are the two loops, and then on the main bed needles, there's just one loop, and it has knitted through. Alternatively, if I had just done a main bed tuck, there would be two loops on these main bed needles and just one on the river. I made a big blanket. I had to move the weights up lots of times, and I used up almost a whole pound of lightweight worsted weight yarn. In fact, I'm so close to the end that I'm afraid I'll run out. So at the end of this batch of 13, and I have just knitted 12 with the ribber tucking, I'm going to go ahead and bind off. So what I'll do is I'll knit that 13th row. Then I'm going to set my carriages for plain knitting and for a very loose tension. So I'll run this all the way up to tension 10 and put it on normal. I'll make sure the main bed's on normal and run it to the loosest tension as well. I'll make sure I don't have too much tension coming from the upper tension unit, just watching it as I go across slowly. And look what big loops we're getting. Now it's really simple. For starters, we have to transfer all these stitches up to the main bed. So see, I'll start by putting them in hold. And then I just grab my double-eyed tool and start transferring. As soon as I have them all switched up to the main bed, I can show you this quick and easy cast off that works just fine for ribbing. As long as the ribbing is tight enough so that you can get a really loose last row compared to the rest of the work. I dropped my ribber down and I put ribber covers on. If you don't have ribber covers, you could hang a towel over this just to get rid of the problem of having little pointy things in your way. And I ended on the left. My carriage is on the other end from this right hand end. So I start on the end where the carriage isn't. And I'm going to work toward the end of the yarn, which I cut. I left about a foot of yarn. I start by putting all the needles in the hole. And the stitches back behind the latches. I use my latch tool to grab this end stitch and move it from the needle to the tool. Then I slip into the second stitch and I get it so that the loop, the new loop on the next needle is inside the latch and that first loop is down below the latch and I just pull that off the end. Now I've demonstrated this many times. It's in my beginner course. It's also in my YouTube videos. And I just think this is great, useful, fast, no fail cast off. So that's how I'm going to cast off. And the next thing I'll do is a little very light steaming. I'm going to launder the blanket with no soap at all and then just tumble it in the dryer with the tiniest bit of a dryer sheet. And even then, I'll, I'll probably cut the dryer sheet in quarters and use just a quarter of a dryer sheet because I don't want anything that will bother baby's sensitive skin. Here I am casting off the last few stitches. Now, keep in mind that I don't have any weight on this work. The weight of the blanket is enough. You want to take all those big old weights and weight hangers off before you begin this job. I just wanted to show how to finish up the cast off. On the last few stitches, it may have a slight tendency to misbehave and try to come off the needle, so I keep my thumb in the way. This way, these last couple of stitches aren't going to come off the needles. They tend to be very loose. Then when I get this last stitch, I give it an extra little tug to tighten that up, and then I just bring the loose end of the yarn on through the last stitch.